happy, wonderful Wednesday to you, everyone. Today's content uh, is going to be in the brass family, as I've been getting a few requests linked to my first video I posted about buzzing and tuning techniques. Now, there are so many different French horn players I will link below that you could go to who are so incredible in the industry and know very well how to teach and how to explain a lot of musical aspects of what we do physically and and musically. But I wanted to touch on something specific as I also wanted to feature one of my students whom I've had just for two years now, who has come so far in not just musicality, but understanding the physical ramifications and the physical process of being a brass player namely a French horn player. Now, we don't just walk up to an instrument and start playing it and sounding great at it. As you know, everyone works many years and trains themselves to become professional to a certain level. And getting there again, as I've spoken, is, is all in ladders. But a lot of what we do makes so much sense when we do it correctly. And there are so many different influences out there, many different band teachers whom I hope if you're a band teacher, you're, you're getting a hold of this content and you'll be able to teach your students in a more specific, but yet understanding and simplified way. And I would say more correctly as well, because I know sometimes it's, it's a challenge as a music education major goes to school. They learn how to teach band and they learn a little bit about every instrument in that ensemble, which is just incredible <laughs> that they're even able to do that. But when you are a specialized professional in that, you know, field, a lot of times schools will bring in those musicians, whether it be a brass quintet, a woodwind quintet, a smaller ensemble, a string quartet, depending on what they're trying to teach their students. But getting into it, I wanted to talk about your embouchure um, and aperture, which I got into a little bit in, in my last video about the buzzing techniques. But more specifically, centering your mouthpiece and having the correct placement of where our, our lips meet the mouthpiece. Now, everyone is, is unique as embouchures are all different shapes and sizes and our lips are all different sizes. So we have some people have a small upper lip and a large bottom lip, vice versa, or big lips or very small, tiny lips. Um, no matter what you do, it doesn't stem from your lips. And that's something that it's more challenging sometimes, perhaps, for someone with bigger lips to play an instrument that has perhaps a smaller mouthpiece. Um, now, as I'm a French horn player, I don't have a trumpet mouthpiece and a trombone mouthpiece and a tuba mouthpiece to compare it. But of all of the mouthpieces, French horn is is kind of the most petite and small one. The trumpet has a, a less deep cup and a little bit of a thicker rim. And then the tr a trombone has a much wider cup as well as a much thicker rim and more and more metal. And you can imagine a tuba mouthpiece is something not quite as big as this, this flower back here, but they, they get bigger in size. And so if you're a person, man or woman, boy or girl with bigger lips, a lot of times your band director may think, oh my gosh, you need to play the tuba or you need to play the bass trombone. And as much as that's probably fairly well suggested, not everyone you know, with big lips plays those brass instruments. There's many incredible players I know <laughs> with beautiful lips, big lips that play the French horn incredibly. And I think it, you know, depends on your teacher and who you study with and how you learn technique. But if I can just offer you a couple of pointers, I want to, aside from featuring my student, I want to give you just a couple little pointers to try and help you make more sense of what you're going for and thinking about it a little bit less. So we have these, these two lips. They're all different sizes and shapes for each person. We have this piece. <laughs> all we do is, is try and as the best we can is place it into the center, right? And it's easier said than done when you've developed a lot of bad habits and not everyone is, is like this, but some people play on the side of their lip. Now I know I mentioned how what we use here with the aperture and the embouchure is all muscle. It really does stem from
from the support you have going on here. Some students also, besides the, the lips, have puffy cheek syndrome. And so they play and they... Because you blow up a balloon and a lot of people do that. Well, using your cheeks to blow air is not efficient and it, it will never get you the type of air you're trying to accomplish by using your cheeks because your cheeks don't store anything but food and moisture and we don't want to store air in there. Our air is supposed to come directly out of our diaphragm through our throat, outside of the whole of our throat to the center of our aperture, embouchure, mouth, and lips. So it's a, there's very many funny jokes about brass players. There's kissing jokes. There's French horn in the hand jokes. Please feel free to send, put your jokes down below in the comments. I would love to read some of them out loud. If you have new jokes, we all like to tease each other in our different families of instruments and we can have a little bit of fun with it, but it's all in good fun and harmony at the same time. But if you have any good jokes, I would love to hear them below. Good music jokes are, they really can't get too much better sometimes. But when I talk about this, I want to make sure you understand everything in the body because the body is a very physical aspect. And, and most importantly, you know, you're, you're sleeping well every night. You're drinking plenty of water all day, every day long. And you're eating a fairly balanced meal plan. No matter what your mother or father has told you or what you, what habits you've learned, you know, every meal you eat, you should have a mixed balance of some fruit, some vegetables, some meat, and, and then some carbohydrate. And all of those things, no matter what they are, should be sort of balanced. And do your best to try to stay away from anything that's, that starts with high fructose corn syrup because that's not healthy for you. And a lot of times as a musician, it can create issues when you're playing in terms of phlegm or in terms of dry mouth, or it's really difficult to play this instrument. So we have to make sure that we're taking care of our bodies so everything else works well. And these muscles we use connect so well with the center of the mouthpiece. And remember, you want to have two thirds of your upper lip and one third of your lower lip that the mouthpiece should be covering. This is for French horn. Please find out specifically what it is for your other instruments, but it, it's very similar in terms of the center, the muscles, the embouchure, the aperture, and centering everything. So if you could just think a little bit more about the diaphragm, coming out exactly as a mirroring center. You want to aim everything towards the middle of the screen, the middle of the wall. You want to find a circle or a hole to focus that sound on so it's all coming out evenly. And so basically to sum it up, if you have bigger lips, it shouldn't deter you from being able to play the instrument well. You just have to do it in such a way that's a little bit more careful. Work on your buzzing, work on stabilizing and strengthening these muscles and just use your air to naturally let that buzz come out of the instrument. But don't let the big lips deter you. Make sure you're looking in the mirror. If you're playing here, it takes time to fix an embouchure change. And now I'll have you watch a little bit of my student in the last two years where he's come. You're going to hear some beautiful classical music from composers such as Mozart and Beethoven and even Franz Strauss. So please enjoy. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel. I really hope this provided you a lot of value, students. Please let me know in the comments below if it made sense to you and if you have any questions, okay? Thank you so much for requesting some information about this particular subject. I know there are many people that will break it down further, but that's where you start taking private lessons and improving in your craft even more. For now, I want to head you in the correct direction to wherever you're going as an instrumentalist that aside from pitch and intonation and timing and sound, all of those are so important in your playing. It stems from the stability, the muscle strength, the relaxation and the focus. And so you want as centered as you can be and puffing cheeks will get into another day.
Until then, I would like you to enjoy my lovely students' progress in I the last the two years. I the person wouldn't think Alex so much Delperton. detail goes into a piece of metal such as a mouthpiece. But as you can see, these are different embouchure placements people have. And this is the different mouthpieces and widths you can order. Now with my student Alex, he started out, as you can see, with a difficulty in shifting his lip downward where we're supposed to have two thirds upper and one third bottom. And, and as he does have a little bit of a bigger lip, it would eventually, as you can see, slide down on his lips. And the goal is to keep that up above, you know, um, in the center where it's two thirds upper and one third bottom. And part of that is all with use of the aperture and the embouchure staying in that smile position. It's a workout for sure. And that's why most players can't play for hour on end. So we worked on this constantly with Alex and he continued to get better and it's called a shift. You basically are shifting your embouchure. So he's playing through, you know, very nicely here, just working on trying to keep a solid embouchure as much as possible. And he's doing a much better job. You can see how his muscles getting even stronger here. But then he discovers the most incredible book, which is called College Prep for Musicians, and went to his first NAM show. And of course, after the first year of school with his studio, I took them all out to a nice little meal that we could share together to celebrate the end of their semester. And once, once we got in, you know, into finishing the semester and summer started, he continued to work and we started the next semester and he had a much more solid embouchure. From day one, you can see how much um, more, you know, centered it is where he's using more of the upper, upper lip now and he's still working on it. Now, Alex has also developed a couple of little habits of the flapping fingers, which some of you may or may not have had, but he's constantly getting better and better at it every day. And something very interesting about Alex's playing is he's also using a school instrument that many of you, you know, know far too much about. In the, these videos, he is playing with a school French horn, so you hear some clicking, and we had to take the instrument in to get it, you know, fixed and, and make it work better. But it's not his own personal instrument that many professionals have. So... You start out, you know, sometimes on an instrument that may not be your own because you don't know if someone's going to continue on it, but then they really want to invest in, in their own personal instrument. Once the semester started back up, we were gung-ho, and then, of course, everything went, as you can see, online. So we were forced to kind of, I think, take our lessons a little bit differently, and somehow I believe that helped Alex focus a little bit more, as you can hear. This is some of his practice sessions, and, and then I'll finish with some highlights of, of his recent jury performances for, for college.